Hello guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Sarah. Hey, if you're new here, and if you're not new here, you've probably forgot about me because I didn't post for over a month. Anyways, we're back with a video I've been really wanting to make today, and it is all about fungal acne. We're gonna be talking about what fungal acne actually is because fungal acne is not really a thing. What can cause fungal acne, how to know if you have it or not, and what you can do to get rid of it because a few months ago, I used a specific product and it really triggered a fungal acne breakout in my skin. So I was like scouring the internet trying to figure out what the heck was going on. I had this horrible, I put some pictures here, some horrible like, it's like a rash. It's not even acne, but it feels completely different than acne. It's itchy, it's red, it's bumpy, so textured. And it, I was just like, what the heck is going on? But anyway, here's the product that I think cause that by the way the inky list oat cleansing balm i looked this up on a website it's like cesia i think um you can look up like different ingredients and it'll tell you how likely it is to trigger fungal acne and this has like 10 major huge ingredients i think it's all the plant oils so if you have fungal acne or suspicious that you have fungal acne be aware of that product because that really triggered my fungal acne breakout so what is fungal acne. Fungal acne is not an actual thing. It's actually called Malassezia folliculitis or it's also known as Pitrosporum folliculitis. Now basically what this is, Malassezia is a yeast on your skin. It's on everybody's skin. It's not anything to worry about but it does cause a problem when it gets overgrown. Oral antibiotics. A lot of people have problems with Malassezia overgrowth after they've had surgeries or like been on courses of antibiotics or if you've had them in the past, which I was on antibiotics for my acne for like a year and a half and nobody told me any of this stuff. So I'm thinking that's part of the problem. I'm more susceptible to fungal acne, all the oral antibiotics, not sure. Now keep in mind, I have not been clinically diagnosed with fungal acne. Fungal acne is not even like a thing, okay? It's Malassezia folliculitis. It's basically where the malassezia gets overgrown in your skin and causes an acne-like rash. Some of the acne, I'm just gonna refer to it as fungal acne for the purpose of this video, that's what most people know it as. Some of the acne can have pus-filled places in it. And when I was doing research, like looking at pictures of fungal acne, I didn't really see many that did, but it can be pus-filled, that can throw you off. Fungal acne, often goes misdiagnosed because you can have normal acne and fungal acne at the same time, which was my case. I've been to a ton of dermatologists and I've even mentioned like, could it be like fungal acne? And I didn't have a fungal acne outbreak like I did on my cheeks in these pictures at the time. So they just kind of shut me down. They're like, no, you just need a retinoid and this wash. So yeah, that didn't help anything. Um, but luckily, I'm kind of glad I had this breakout because it led me to looking on the internet and did more research about fungal acne. I actually found the budget dermatologist video. I'll put it right here in the description box. And that's where I got most of the information that I'm sharing with you in this video and where I found the products that I used to get rid of my fungal acne, get rid of like maintain it and get rid of the big breakout I had of it. So that's pretty much what fungal acne is. It's not actually a fungal acne. It's the overgrowth of malassezia on the skin. Some people are just more susceptible to it being overgrown and then getting that acne-like rash, but there are ways to combat it. So I'm gonna share that with you in a little bit. So how to know if you have fungal acne? The only real true way to know for sure is to get tested by a dermatologist. They take like a little skin sample, look at it under a microscope and can tell you if you have the malassezia overgrowth or not. But how I knew I had it, there are a few like key symptoms of it. Itchiness, so much itchiness all over where all the bumps are. All the tiny little clusters of bumps, they're normally red, but sometimes they're like skin colored. Mine were mainly red. Um, I had bumps on my neck. I still actually have like a few and then by your ears, these little triangles right here, I had texture and itchy bumps there too, which is like a major sign of it. 
You can get it on your chest and back. Your forehead's a major spot and your cheeks and chin is a major spot too. Um, I think the mask definitely didn't help mine. Malassezia thrives in a dark, moist, warm environment. And if you have oily skin, because the Malassezia feeds on oil. So it's just all a setup for a horrible outbreak of fungal acne. I did all of it, so it was bound to happen. But I'm glad it did so I could figure out what the heck was going on and share it with you guys to hopefully help somebody. Okay, so those were some of my key symptoms. It doesn't feel like normal acne. I've had hormonal acne. I still deal with normal acne, but mine was just mixed in, so it made it even harder to like diagnose, even though I self-diagnosed here. What I did worked, so that's why I'm like, that was probably fungal acne, it had to be. Okay, so how you can treat fungal acne. This is how I treated it at least. Here's the main things that I found under $20 what I actually like had to buy and they helped so much so I'll leave everything linked down below in case you're interested in buying anything the main thing here you want to kill the excess malassezia so you can either use zinc perithion which is in anti-dandruff shampoos or ketoconazole which is in nizerol in anti-dandruff shampoo so dandruff is caused by the overgrowth of malassezia same yeast so you can use the same ingredients Instead of using head and shoulder shampoo, which was zinc perithion or ketoconazole, which is the Nizerol shampoo, I chose the Vanny Cream Z Bar. This is a 2% zinc perithion bar. I chose this because it was fragrance free, um, had the least amount of irritating ingredients. This doesn't really dry me out. Um, it did sting my skin when it was broken out. It doesn't sting now, but if you're having breakouts, it does kind of sting. When you use this or Nizerol or Head & Shoulders, you just want to look for that active ingredient, Zinc Perithion 2% or Ketoconazole 1%. When you use any of those products, you want to lather it on your face and leave it for a few minutes. Now, I wouldn't leave it like 10 minutes or anything, but probably max five, maybe two to five minutes just to give that active ingredient time to work. That's a huge thing. So I'd like wash my face with my normal CeraVe foaming cleanser and then lather this up on my face. Avoid your eye area because it stings like crazy. But go ahead and lather this up, leave it for a few minutes and then rinse it off. Follow with a moisturizer. Now a huge thing is getting an oil-free moisturizer. Malassezia feeds off of oil. So you're gonna wanna use oil-free stuff with the exception of mineral oil because malassezia doesn't recognize mineral oil like it does plant oil so it doesn't really like feed off of it just thought i'd throw that in there so for my moisturizer i like to use the cerave daily moisturizing lotion this is oil free very moisturizing i like it a lot but it's not too heavy um you want to avoid like shea butter based stuff any plant oil based stuff yeah that'd be feeding the yeast and counteracting what you're doing. But that's what I do at night. I also got this Prosacea Rosacea Gel. All this is is a 10% sulfur treatment. You can use it on acne, fungal acne. Sulfur is anti-inflammatory, antibacterial, and antifungal. So it's going to work against that malassezia. This can be a little bit drying though. So I'd use it like I think I use it two times a day starting out. Oh, I forgot to say, the Vanny Cream Z Bar. I used this every night for a week and it helped tremendously. And then the next week I moved to like every other night and now I use this about one time a week for maintenance as like the leave on few minute mask. So yeah, this is like the main thing that helped. You need to try this, it's like eight bucks if you struggle with fungal acne at all or even have a question about it. I mean, literally you could use this as just like a normal bar soap, if nothing else. So, I really like it a lot. So yeah, this Prosacea Gel, I do think it helped to just have this on my breakouts, the fungal acne breakouts. I also put this on my acne sometimes. I can't tell that it does a whole lot for my normal acne, but I do think it helped just like kill off the excess yeast because the sulfur is antifungal. But it can be a little bit drying, so I would use it kind of sparingly. I wouldn't like to use it as a face mask, but this is like eight bucks as well. I do think it helped quite a bit. So there's the rosacea gel. There's also other sulfur masks if you want to use that. Sulfur is just the main ingredient that you're trying to look for there. Okay. 
those are the main things that like really really helped the prosacea and the vena cream z-bar this is going to kill off the malassezia the rest of the stuff can just aid in it and other things that you need to use like a normal face wash and moisturizer these were safe for me other than that I wear water resistant sunscreen every day, so I need to get that off. I was like, what the heck am I gonna use? Because I think my Hot Alive oil cleanser has olive oil in it. And I didn't want to use any plant oils. So Abilene was a good choice because it's made mainly of mineral oil. There's no like plant oils in here, and Malassezia does not detect mineral oil the same way it can feed off of the plant oils. So Abilene's a good choice. I've also used Pond's Fragrance Free Cold Cream. That one's really hard to get now, which sucks because I really liked it, but this is like eight or nine bucks. I got mine from Walmart, but they don't sell it anymore, which is annoying, but yeah, eight or nine bucks. This has lasted for forever, and it's pretty fungal acne safe because they don't recognize the mineral oil like they do plant oils. Okay, so for the morning time, this can also be helpful a salicylic acid cleanser. Now salicylic acid and benzoyl peroxide don't kill the malassezia, but they can both help. So the salicylic acid goes into your oil glands and eats up all that excess oil and gets it out, which is what the malassezia feeds off of. So that's how salicylic acid can help. This also just like exfoliates your skin gently. So I like to use this in the morning time, lather it up, leave it on a few minutes, then rinse it off. I have a morning skincare routine. If you want to watch that, I'll link it right up here. So salicylic acid can be helpful, but it's not going to treat it itself. You need some kind of ingredient that kills the malassezia, like in the Van Cream Z-Bar. Okay, and I still use benzoyl peroxide some, mainly for my normal acne, but yeah, if you're having a fungal acne breakout, don't slather benzoyl peroxide on it. It's not going to do much, but I really do like using benzoyl peroxide for my normal breakouts that are mixed in with fungal acne. So that's all I use. Um, the main things you're going to want to get here are the sulfur and the Z-Bar, the zinc perithium, to kill that fungal acne. Use these religiously for like a week or two and you should see some improvement. Um, if you're eating kombucha, any fermented foods, alcohols, a lot of sugar, it can also feed the problem, but these should take care of the breakout you're having and help it at least calm down. That's what helped me a lot. So I'll leave everything linked down below. I hope this was helpful. Leave any questions you have in the comments. Keep in mind, I'm not a doctor, so I can't give you like medical advice. I'm just sharing what worked for me and what helped my skin a lot. I don't know what I would have done without these products here. Don't know what I would have done. So I hope this helped. Give it a thumbs up if it did. Subscribe down below and follow me on Instagram if you ever want to talk to somebody or you want to ask questions that you don't feel comfortable asking in the comments. My Instagram is always down in the description box. Send me a DM. I love talking to you guys and making new friends. So I'll see you guys in the next video. I can feel those butterflies when I go to sleep at night.